Okay, in the last section of this section on metal processing, I'm going to finish up with powder processing and the powder processing techniques that are used in uh, manufacture of medical devices. So again, let's just have a look at what's been covered in terms of metal processing. I've talked about casting, investment casting in particular, machining, we looked at turning, milling, uh, laser cutting and abrasive water technology. Uh, the list is by no means complete, but uh, it gives you a good overview of the machining techniques in the industry. Uh, we've talked about rapid prototyping, in particular selective laser sintering and uh, binder jetting or often known as 3D printing. And uh, to finish up, I'll talk about powder metallurgy as the last arm in metal processing. So powder processes or, or powder processing technology um, is used more frequently for precision manufacturing. It's a form of casting that doesn't use molten metal. It's used to make unique materials impossible to melt or form in other ways. Um, so what happens here is that a found, fine powdered metal of the desired alloy is placed into a mold with a binder or a flux and then uh, heated until the particle boundaries partially melt and the particles fuse together. Uh, and this is a process known as sintering. Um, the advantage in powder processing is excellent precision. And I'll, I'll just talk through a few methods uh, in detail. Uh, but first of all, uh, just to show uh, an example or so of, of powder metal, which has been cast here into a rod and a sphere shape. So powder sintering, which I just talked about, is the process of compacting and forming a solid mass of material by heat or pressure without melting it to the point of liquefaction. So you melt it enough that the powder particles fuse with each other, but not so much that it liquefies. So what happens is the atoms in the material diffuse across the boundaries of the particles and they fuse the particles together and create one solid piece. Because the sintering temperature does not have to reach the melting point of the material, uh, sintering is often used as the shaping process for materials with a really high melting point such as uh, tungsten and molybdenum. So hot isostatic pressing is a type of heat treatment that is done uh, to powders and here what happens is powders are subject to elevated temperatures and an isostatic gas pressure. So this means the pressure is coming from all directions to the powder in a high pressure containment vessel and uh, this is usually between say 50 and 300 megapascals. It happens around 100 uh, usually. The chamber is heated and this causes the pressure inside the vessel to further increase. So the metal powders can be turned compact solid by this method um, and then they have a process soak temperature of about 480 degrees Celsius for things like aluminium to 1300 for nickel based super alloys. Um, so when powders are processed like this to make stock shapes instead of forging um, the mechanical properties of the resulting stock shape are superior. The simultaneous application of the heat and the pressure it eliminates internal voids and microporosity and it improves the fatigue resistance of the component. Um, so it is, as I said, uh, superior in quality to just hot forge stock. Now, metal injection moulding is a processing technique that's gaining great traction at the moment as an alternative to investment casting and machining. Uh, so to make complex shapes, um, what happens here is a very fine powder, less than say 20-25 microns, is mixed with a plastic or a wax binder. And then this is injection moulded to form what's called a green part of complex geometry. And I'll explain injection moulding in one moment. But the part then is heated to remove the binder. So it's heated to a low temperature. The, uh, the wax or the plastic um, melts out and it's de-binding. And uh, this is called a brown part. The brown part then is sintered. 
so it's uh, raised to a temperature just less than the melting point of the metal and uh, the, the, the powder particles fuse together and it shrinks here by about 18% so um, in the process the shrinkage is accounted for um, it can give a very very complex shape uh, it can be very dense 97 to 99% density and it enables the production of micro-sized parts and intricate medical components uh, that features threads, undercuts, uh, and things that are not possible to achieve using traditional manufacturing processes. So it's ideal for um, a situation where there might be a low volume of products but a short lead time. Uh, so it's not as wasteful as investment casting, for example. It's a short lead term, uh, but it, it would be difficult to, to make up big volumes of it. So applications of this are in uh, things like orthodontics, surgical instruments, knee and other orthopedic implant parts. And as I said, I will just explain injection molding to you uh, briefly. So injection molding, I'm going to talk about in a lot more detail in the polymer section of the course. But uh, for right now, we'll just have a look at it here in terms of powder processing. Uh, so P is where the powder and the binder is fed into the molds. Uh, so it travels along here uh, through the gates and into the molds themselves. Okay, so uh, due to compaction, uh, you get a molded part. Then the wax or the plastic binder is, um, is melted out. Um, the parts are sintered. Uh, so the powder particles fuse. Um, and then the mold halves are opened and you get a finished part. So as I said, this is really enabling a better design of minimally invasive devices um, and is being used in the orthopedic section, sector and or orthodontics as well. And so that completes the section on metal processing. And I hope it's given a good overview of the different types of processing techniques that are available again depending on the metal type that needs to be used and the degree of tolerance the degree of um, intricacy that's involved in manufacturing as well so all of these factors are going to determine what metal processing technique is employed um, as i said it's not a comprehensive list i haven't covered them all but it gives a good flavor of what's out there so thank you